Hello everybody, my name is Provis, and welcome to Surviving Mars! The new Below and Beyond expansion releases as of today, so of course we're going to try out a new series and explore that new content. We've had a lot of fun with Surviving Mars in the past, and I expect we will continue to have a lot of fun going forward. And to make things even better, Paradox is actually sponsoring today's video, which is obviously very much appreciated. Thank you, Paradox. We joked about that in the last series, and now it is a reality. Of course, that does mean if you guys want to learn more about the game and the expansion, you can find a link in the description down below and beyond. Or, alternatively, if you subscribe to the Paradox Interactive YouTube channel, they release three tutorial videos exploring the new content. And fun fact, I created those tutorials, so I'd recommend you go and check those out. It is a very good primer into the new content of the game, which primarily will include traveling to space to mine asteroids and exploring the underground tunnels of Mars. Now, for this particular pre uh, playthrough, I will preface, I'm not looking to go for a maximum difficulty run. I know some people would love to see that, and there is a new maximum difficulty number. We'll try to do that someday in the future, but for now, I'm going to choose something a little bit easier because I want to explore that content sooner rather than later. And if I go max difficulty, it's going to be a while <laughs> before I can touch any of those. So to that extent, let's play with a European mission sponsor because I can get some extra science that way. And uh, there's a lot of new technologies that are gated behind the science rate, so if we can get extra research, that just means I get access that much sooner. We'll go for a city mayor, which is one of the easiest uh, commanders available. Extra money and less maintenance on buildings. Very powerful. Uh, but to, we'll make that a little bit harder by picking up, let's say, the dredgers for a normal difficulty um, mystery. I will save wildfire for the future because we'll need that for a max difficulty run. And then as far as game rules, we have a couple of new options here. We can turn off all below and beyond content. Don't know why you would do that. Or we can make Mars Quakes extremely active and dangerous in the underground. So that's an extra 100% difficulty right there. Sure, sounds good. We'll go ahead and take that. Beyond that, uh, let's go for Twister, Dust in the Wind. We'll just make natural disasters a lot worse. Inflation, so that prices go up and we can't import very much. And how about the Long Ride for more travel to and from Mars? And maybe Amateurs. No specialist applicants allowed uh, for our passengers. But I think that'll be good enough. So we're looking at 540% for our difficulty rating right now. That's not bad. I'll leave the rocket payload with the default. I'm sure it's fine. And then for a randomized start, I mean, I'm looking for something with a pretty good, well, that was, oh yeah, I know this would be pretty good. Something with plenty of metals, concrete, and water. All right, fine, 635% is going to be our final difficulty rating. Excellent. Now, understand, with this new content, I kind of alluded to this earlier, it's not something we're really going to want to take advantage of this video or even the next video. Uh, accessing asteroids and going underground both require a fair bit of research, and it's not going to be cost-effective until about the mid-game. So we won't get into that immediately, but you can access it early if you want to. I'm just probably not gonna, so we'll see. All right, so starting down over here, we see a couple of concrete deposits. That's fine-ish. Um, I only have a couple of probes to work with. Where might I want to go? We see a little bit of metals on the surface. That's good. Let's do a probe, let's say, up over here. Okay, we found a fair bit more over here. And how about another like this? Okay, we found some water. So this area is probably what's going to be the most attractive to me. Plenty of concrete deposits, plus some metals not too far away, some water not too far away. Though it's not a very good deposit, but okay, I'll make do with it as is. Um... Yeah, I think this will be probably the best for us. It still accesses everything I'm going to need in the early game. So let's go ahead and land our rocket. And go for active research. So as Europe, we have access to six additional... Sorry, seven in this case, I guess. The second tier of researches are visible right off the bat. That's fun. Here, by the way, is a whole new research column for recon and expansion. It doesn't impact much on the surface of Mars itself. Almost everything is devoted specifically to the asteroids or to the tunnels. So we're not going to be touching this for a while. Although I will say there is a research down here in the wonder category, which isn't a wonder itself, but it's really good. And I'm not going to spoil it. Just you will want to get down this column at some point. All right, so let's see. Uh, we don't care as much about money and stuff. Probe's cheaper. I do like the idea of getting the sensor towers for some um, easy scanning, but it doesn't require power or maintenance. What about... We'll go for the extra science per soul, because I think the faster you ramp that up, generally speaking, the better. And we will go for the autonomous sensors after that, followed by the transports and maybe uh, less fuel requirements, so I can send my rocket back to Earth uh, a little bit sooner. Seems good to me. All right, let's go ahead and speed things up. You've all seen this before, right? If you haven't actually seen Mar uh, Surviving Mars before, I'd really recommend you go check out 
some of my other series. We've had a lot of fun with this in the past. First thing we're going to go ahead and do is set up some concrete extractors. We know we're going to need this, so I'll just go ahead and do it. We'll rotate you around. Overdid it. Like that. There we go. Not a fantastic deposit of only 430. This one's obviously better, but we'll come back to that in due time. Let's quickly also set up a universal depot so my drones will start gathering up the metal deposits, of which there are a fair bit in the area, as well as a load of polymers. That's a really good find, honestly. Early game polymers and early game plenty of metals, very, very important. This is a solid start. It's a very solid start so far. Let's go ahead and start scanning the nearby area. We'll do something kind of like this, just scanning around. Now, fun fact, as Europe, uh, we do still have access to RC commanders, but there's not much incentive to get them because instead we have RC seekers. They do the exact same thing, but if the seeker is sitting still and doing nothing, then it just acts as a sensor tower. So we now actually have a slight boost in my sensor tower boost here. This is helpful. It's really nice. So we like this thing. We like RC seekers. They're great. Okay, we have our concrete extractor. We need to get some power for that. Of course, let's pay attention to the um, uh, dust radius to make sure when we place down at least a solar panel or two, we are not accidentally setting ourselves up for some pain. Uh, I actually need to place you a little bit closer, kind of like this. Eh, close enough. It gives me a little bit of buffer to make sure I don't mess it up. And we'll place one over here, we'll place one over here. Perfect. Now, I don't need three to power a concrete extractor. This only requires five power, and each one of these provides five power during the day. But I also know that I'm going to need to get some fuel refining as well as a moisture vaporator. So, let's see. I suspect if I'm placing a dome, it's going to be in this area to access the metals and the rare metals, which means when we place things, we want to keep them out of the way. I think we'll go ahead and start by placing a moisture vaporator, let's say, out over here, followed by my fuel refinery, which we have a prefab for, right over here, I think. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, perfect. And that means each of these consuming five power, once we have these solar panels up and running, which we do as of now, uh, we should be able to power all three of these during the day, no issues at all. Just need to make sure we actually get these power cables up and running a little bit faster, if you guys don't mind. They're gathering up the metals, they're doing their best, they're trying their darndest, but these drones aren't exactly the smartest little thing you've ever seen, is it? are they? No, not at all. Uh, we got power over there, great, that means we now need to get ourselves some pipes. Getting some early game metals, uh, concrete, and fuel are probably your top priorities. Of course, you do need water in order to make fuel, but that's why you always want to start off with at least one moisture evaporator. Can you guys please finish building these dang cables? Thank you. Alright, now we're set up. Let's go ahead and make sure we set up some storages. I want to get concrete. Uh, honestly, we can just place it over here for now. But let's also get a separate fuel depot because I have learned the hard way. You never want to have fuel in your universal depot. Because if it ever blows up, it takes a lot of resources with you and you're going to be a sad camper. Don't want to do that. Hey, we found a research site over here. If we place domes in this general vicinity, we'll be able to get some extra research. That's not too far away from where I'm already looking at placing some domes, so... This might become a viable option, actually, to hook up some domes in this area. Of course, now my buildings are in the way, but, I mean, I don't know. We'll make it. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Uh, sensor towers. We could really use some of these. Now, the problem is, right now, they require cable connections, which is unfortunate. Um, I guess we go ahead and... Ah, uh, hang on. How long will it take for us to get the autonomous sensors? Not long. You know what? Let's go ahead and outsource this. I'm going to spend a billion dollars in order to get a lot of extra research and really start plowing through this. Because I would like to just be able to place these wherever I want and not have to worry about power or maintenance costs. Not that it really matters that much. All right, fine, fine. I've convinced myself. Let's just go ahead and place one, two, three. We'll get some sensor towers set up. Start scanning the area. It'll be fine. Also, let's go back to Earth and request an RC transport. I would like to have a rover that is able to um, gather up some metals and stuff that will be out of range of my rockets. We already know of quite a bit of metals out here and stuff. Let's just go ahead and bring them all back. Honestly, you can get away without doing some underground mining for a long time if there's a lot of metals on the surface and you have one or two of those RC transports. They do the job pretty effectively. Uh, let's set up another one of the solar panels because even though we do have sensor towers, um, not all of them can work unless we have a little bit of extra power. So we'll get that sorted out. And we could place down some batteries uh, and start storing power to have these things all running during the night, but I don't need to do that this exact moment, so we're just going to go ahead and ignore that. All right, so this should have been enough power. How much is this consuming? Hang on. You're consuming two, two... Oh, we're one short still, aren't we? Darn it. Well, 
Fine, we'll just live with two. We'll have we'll have freebies later. Okay, we found an anomaly. Excellent. I've been looking for those. Uh, RC Explorer, get over here and grab. This will get me some new technologies, and simply finding the anomaly will probably get me some extra boosts, like, I don't know, a little bit of extra research or some extra money. I don't really know. I will say, I really miss having my 10 or 15 times speed, um game speed down over here. Once we actually get the modding community to catch up with the game now that the expansion has released and there's a new version, uh, that is one of the first things I plan on getting. Because this game's really fun. But there are definitely points where it can be a little bit slow and you're waiting for things to happen. So being able to go a lot faster is awesome. Let's grab this RC transport and we're just going to go ahead and load up on, let's say, these metals and bring them back over here. And just save my drones a fair bit of work. That should be easy enough. The extract. While digging in the dirt, a drone stumbled across a crashed supply pod almost entirely buried. Cannot be identified. Its hole is too burnt and the black box is missing. We find some strange designs in them. Ooh. Really? Well, hello. Okay. What do I want? This is actually really interesting. Trib Electric Scubbers. This removes dust from things. So it basically spends power to remove... Well, and I think it has a... Is it an electronics maintenance cost? That's something to consider. But I think it uh, reduces maintenance of everything around it, which can be pretty good. Subsurface heater, great if we're going to have a cold wave. But I don't need that. Two MDS lasers, takes up power, but will protect me from meteors. Or a shuttle hub, get enough fuel, and have shuttles start moving stuff around for me. That's pretty good. We don't need this right now is the thing, but it's really good to have. Oh, I don't know what I want. All of these are good, but none of them are useful for the early game. Hmm, I'm thinking Shuttle Hub. We'll go with that. I'm, I could construct it right now, but we don't have nearly enough fuel in order to justify it. So yeah, ignore that for now, but interesting. Very interesting. All right, so the autonomous lasers are going. What else we discover? We found out something that drones can move faster. That works great for me. Personally, in the early game, I find robotics to be the best research, followed by uh, engineering and physics on... Roughly the same level, depends on what you have in the area and what you think you're going to need for efficiencies. Uh, but once we start thinking about having any sort of colonists, of course, biotech and social research are fantastic. Often overlooked, often underestimated. Fools, it's so good. You need that. Anomaly analyzed. All right, let's see. We found buried treasure. It's a sulfur-rich regolith. Well, we can get a thousand science right now or I can make all engineering tech cheaper. This is really good. This is long-term better. This is, I have to go with that. I have to go with the long-term play here. As much as I would love to have a boost of a thousand science, we don't need it. It's okay. New techs available for research. Oh, right. Okay. So we discovered the drone hub extender, which is part of the new research tree, as well as topology AI. Mm, yeah, that's faster on landscaping projects. Actually, not, it, of, of all the terraforming techs, one of the more useful ones to have in the early game because there's a good chance you'll want to flatten some stuff out. And we obviously have a really big ramp that we need to build to access this entire area. Now the fun fact is, because we do have access to an RC commander really early on, we could just go ahead and start this process. I mean, it's a thing we could do. Let's see, if I built you up to here. This will take a long time, but we could just go ahead and get the ramp. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get that ramp going. Why not? Seems fine. And the thing is, as long as the RC Seeker is standing still, we will be able to take advantage of the full sensory bonuses. The rovers, or the drones, sorry, will still be doing their thing, but the RC commander is doing its, is just sitting there, which means extra scanning. Opening the build menu. Ah, yes, the game is already critiquing my inability to use hotkeys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am notoriously bad at it, I know. Gosh, you make me so insecure, game, sometimes. Ugh. All right, what else do we need? Well, if we're focusing hard on things like concrete, metals, and fuel, let's go ahead and double up on that. We've got some money. Let's go to a supply pod and go ahead and buy another moisture evaporator and a fuel refinery. Takes up all my space. Yeah, it takes a fair bit of money, but it's all right. We need to get more fuel, so I will be able to launch this rocket and go back home. Though without a drone hub, we definitely do not want to go anywhere. We need drone control. This thing is my drone control for right now. Get rid of this and... Well, we're going to feel real freaking stupid, aren't we? Let's also go ahead and double up on another one of these concrete extractors. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to rotate you. Okay, we'll just go ahead and do something kind of like this. Needs a cable connection. We can figure that out. That's completely fine. Uh, do, 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 and do. There we go. 
That'll work. And finally, we need some place to dump all of my rocks because we're going to have a lot of them. Plus, we're going to need at least one more solar panel in order to keep that all running during the day. All right, so this is going to double up on my concrete production and... Once this arrives, we'll double up on my fuel production, most of which right now is currently getting dumped into the rocket, which makes sense. It's what it's supposed to do. We found any more anomalies yet? Mm, darn it, no anomalies. Also, no sign of the shaft that is going to send us down to the underground. Um, did we just finish with this ramp already? Uh, okay, that doesn't feel right. So, uh, fun fact, um, I'm currently playing on an early access version of this uh, expansion, obviously, because I had to record it for recording day. So a little bit of a hot code issue right there. I'll go ahead and make a note of that and send that off to the devs and make sure they know that apparently my ramp just built freaking instantly. Very convenient for me. Um, unexpected. Let's go ahead and place down another one of these landing pods. I actually am tempted to go and build some more ramps and stuff right now just because I can, but uh, that would be unsportsman right? Yeah, so let's just go ahead and not do that. We have some extra prefabs. Excellent. That means we need, guess what? More power. Yes, I need the power. Set up a couple more of these like so. And life support, moisture evaporator. Actually, you know what? First thing we want is another one of these fuel refineries, which <sighs> when we launch this rocket, it's going to create a load of dust that drastically increases the maintenance cost of these buildings. I could place these further away, um, and I guess we will. I just, I don't like what I'm doing with this area. I don't like what I'm doing with it. It looks ugly, 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 but all right, fine. Do this, it'll be fine, and more pipes go this way, and actually, we don't even need them to go anywhere else besides this. This is kind of fine. They just need to hook between each other. Yeah, what am I thinking? That's fine. Okay, whatever. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and get something hooking these up as far as power, and they'll all get delivered to the same spot. So this is going to be my fuel refining area. Okay. Not bad. Um, drones are a little slow in the uptake with the uh, refinery, but that's all right. Found an anomaly. Excellent. Uh, Explorer, go fix. This is going to be a new technology thing as well. It's just going to open up a whole bunch of new techs that I can look at. Drone swarm. This is something I usually do want to get kind of early on. Extra drones when we build drone hubs. That counts for prefabs too, by the way. So if you buy a prefab, you get two extra drones. It's just a little bit of extra value if you're going to do that. So that's that's kind of my philosophy. It's probably worth doing. All right, got a little extra power going. This concrete extractor apparently has fallen apart, but that's fine. Let's make sure we are turning these off at night until we get batteries. There's no point in doing anything else, though. To be fair, they'll do it automatically, so why do I care? Advanced Martian engine is done, so we need less fuel. That's going to make things a little bit easier to transport back and forth, but until we buy a drone hub, it doesn't matter too much. Rocket cargo space increasing could be useful. Could also start working down some of the social tech, and the reason I'm going to do that is because somewhere down here, probably in one of these two, is an extra 100 research per soul, which once this outsourcing goes away, is going to translate into a fair bit of extra research for me, so it's probably worth having. And then, yeah, after that, we'll go for fuel compression. We might as well just have more effective rockets transporting back and forth. All right. Not a bad start for us so far, honestly. I mean, it's a little humble, obviously, but like, yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. I would love to find a breakthrough technology kind of early on, just because knowing what I'm going to get for breakthrough stuff can change up a lot of your uh, early build order. It really can change the game up. Case in point, in the last series, with our maximum difficulty run, which was an absolute blast to play, uh, we um, did this, uh, get the breakthrough that lets me mine things like underground metals and rare metals with no colonists, which was really helpful to get my industry up and running. And it was really, really good, considering it was hard for me to actually get any dang colonists. I ended up having to resort to kidnapping. Discovered a metal deposit. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Um, hmm. All of a sudden, a dome is going to be harder to place and take advantage of all three of these. I feel like you can only get one here, one here, and then maybe bridge it out to take advantage of science. I don't know. We'll see. Let's take a look at my mission profile. What do we actually need? Well, apparently we don't have a mission to bring uh, humans to Mars before Sol 15, which is what I'm used to doing, so that's nice. It takes a lot of pressure off of me. Research physics techs to get a triple electric scrubber. Okay. 20 scientists to get some geniuses. Two Hawking Institutes to get a free network node, which actually is really good. I mean, if I'm going to have two Hawking Institutes, I can just make it better with a network node. That actually is great synergy. 50 Martian-born scientists to get a rocket, and then 10,000 science per soul to just get $3 billion. 
Not super exciting, except for the Hawking Institute. This one's really good. We can rename the colony, by the way, and since we did go for a European sponsor, let's name it New Ulm. Because, I mean, it needs to be New Ulm. It's a great name for a Mars colony, let's be honest. In fact, if anything, when we eventually do start colonizing Mars, uh, I think we have to name one New Ulm. We should start a petition, okay? If we ever start colonizing Mars, and for some reason they haven't named one New Ulm, we should fix that. We should demand that they name it New Ulm. All right, it's probably time to go ahead and start getting some power going for some um, battery tech and such. Let's go ahead and build one. Of course, this does take polymers and maintenance. It's one of the reasons I'm always hesitant to rush things like uh, batteries that require expensive maintenance. You can't help it with fuel refinery, which takes machine parts. I mean, that is what it is. But, you know, eh, okay, polymers. That said, because we got a really big bunch of polymers nearby, it's not that big a deal. We'll be, we'll be fine at the end of the day. We'll be fine. We can already launch our rocket, by the way, because we have produced enough fuel. That's good. Again, not doing that right now. But we may want to go ahead and get another supply pod and just buy out a drone hub. We could actually buy a couple of them out. That wouldn't be bad. What else would we get, though? Let me think. Anything else here would be really good? We could get another moisture vaporator. Be a way to start stockpiling some water in preparation for colonists. Anything else? Machine parts? Electronics? I don't know, maybe a couple extra drones wouldn't be bad. They don't cost too much. But, you know, if we're going to get a drone hub, as long as we research that tech in time, it's not going to matter that much. We'll just go ahead and get two drone hubs. It's going to cost me $300 million, but I think that's fine. Let's go ahead and do the launch. And let's make sure we do pick up this tech. This is going to be kind of important for me to get kind of early on if I am going to make use of that. And we might as well get this rocket going back home. I mean, the faster we can do things like that, the faster I can start establishing supply lines back and forth. Just costs fuel, and it takes a lot of time because of our game rules, but we'll be able to start really transporting some goods back and forth. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. All right. So, battery is up and running, and we have just enough surplus power that this thing is going to be active. I think what we will do is allow the concrete extractors to operate during the night, but not the rest. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure they're going to drain too much power for this to work. So, we'll keep an eye on this, and if we still have surplus power, then yeah, we can go ahead and start turning some stuff off, and that's not going to be too bad for me. The question now is, should we go ahead and end this video? Well, it would have been really nice to discover the Mars Underground. I'm not too sure where that shaft has gone. We can probably find it if I look for it. Um, there's a low G drive, which means my drones move around faster, by the way. There's a shaft somewhere. Where could it be? Uh... Is that? Oh, there's one. Okay, there might actually be... Sometimes there's more than one on a map, but there's there's one right there. This is the shaft that leads into the underground. You can sort of tell. So, eventually, we have to explore into this area in order to start really taking advantage of it. Really far away from my rockets. Really far away. That's unfortunate. Was there another one right here? Ah, there's another shaft down over here. Okay, see? Yeah, there's more than one. Let's go ahead and drop this sucker off. And that will get my drone hub prefabs set up. And once we have drone swarm done, so I get a couple of extra drones, in this case, four extra free drones, then we'll go ahead and start building those. We'll launch the rocket and we'll just, you know, kind of start being more and more self-sustained. I think this is a good place for us to end things, though. So thank you all very much for watching. I hope you're looking forward to this series because I'm certainly looking forward to playing it. And again, thank you to Paradox Interactive for sponsoring today's video. Very, very much appreciated. You guys can learn more about the game in the link in the description down below. My name is Provis. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.